Hello and welcome to Academic Coordinates. Today I am joined by Mr. Justice, who will tell us more about his journey as he has completed his university education and holds a BSc, um, within, which initially started as a theoretical physics BSc, but actually switched to mathematics. Yeah, mathematical sciences. Yes. So how are you? I'm good, I'm good, how are you? I'm well, thank you. So what can you tell us about your upbringing and how you grew up? Um, where did you grow up? Where are you from? Um, I am Benda, so I am from Limpopo, that's where Benda is. Um, particular in Vuani. Um, well, I did my schooling there, my primary school in there, also my secondary school in there. And then after that, I then went to Stellenbosch. Yeah. So um, what can you tell us about just your upbringing in general? What kind of upbringing did you have? What kind of place did you grow up in? Um, in terms of the, it, I mean, I grew up in the village. It was, it's an amazing place, honestly speaking. Um, I, I really don't know how to answer this question because I don't know. It was just an amazing upbringing. And my parents were amazing. Uh, my family is quite amazing. Like you would want to be uh, the part of my family, but you know. Okay. So it was that amazing. So yeah. So so um, how did you? then go into school um what can you tell us about your school life um your what kind of person were you in school were you like that hard-working student that's just there to get it done or were you kind of a laid back i don't know where this is going type but we're in school now how can you describe yourself uh -huh. at school well at school okay at First of all, I didn't really like the school syllabus from a very young age. Yeah. Um, I was more like a person who likes exploring, if I can put it that way. Like, uh, just read uh, this article or that article, watch this uh, episode on TV or that, of documentaries and stuff like that. That's just the kind of person I was. Cause like, yeah. hardworking, yeah just so that I can get the grade, so that I can actually get to do what I want to do. So yeah, but I was more of a curious person than a hardworking person, if I can put it that way. Yeah, so take us to your grade nine here when you're choosing subjects for grade 10. Um, what went into that decision? Well, because of the school I went to, um, the secondary school, you, you didn't really have a choice. It was science stream only. Um, so my decision really, I made that decision while I was still in grade uh, seven, so to say. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, my brother did uh, accounting, went to an accounting school, a pure accounting school. So while I was still grade six or somewhere there, I came across one of his uh, books. And I could, I could see some of those things, which I later learned to be like balance sheets and stuff like that. And I was like, uh -uh, I'm not doing this. So I like science better than, uh, it could, well, at that time it was EMS, so to say. So yeah. I was like, okay, I'm just going to go to a science school then. Yes. In, uh, the commerce school. So then, um, what other things did you do in high school except your academics? Were you involved in any extracurricular activities? What other interesting things were you part of? No, I like, um, I live, well, my high school was kind of like a bit far. So yes. It was very limited in terms of uh, what I could do for extramural activities and stuff yeah. like that. So, no, I did not, but I tried debating at one point, but I didn't like the debating team because of how it was structured. And then I was like, ah, this is ain't for me. So in your high school years, how did you envision yourself in the future? What did you envision yourself doing after high school? Actually, I, as I was being a curious person, um, okay, at first, obviously, I, like, I was confused as most other people. Yeah. Um, 
I, at first I wanted to be a doctor, imagine. And then at, at another point, I did think of becoming an actual scientist. Then, then I started watching some shows on TV, like uh, construction shows. It's like, okay, I actually want to be a civil engineer. Wow. And then, at the, very, <laughs> then at, the, at the end, I was like, no, actually, I like to understand how things, uh, how things work. So the only thing that will uh, give me that was physics. And then I was like, okay, let me go do physics. So then what stood out for you in your high school life that you look back and think about and you're like, wow, that was actually something that was really nice about high school, something that I really enjoyed about it. So for me personally, um, I've, for, for, for a long time, I would think of myself as a pretty average student, just, yeah. just getting by because I was more into curious stuff than just uh, the academic stuff. Um, there was a point where I was like, okay, let me just work on my math because I wasn't good at it at, at first. And then I went to my, um, I think it was my grade 12 teacher, yeah, Mr. Skeeter. Uh, then he started showing me a couple of stuff and then I started enjoying math. I think that was the period where I was like, actually, uh, things are starting to make sense now. Even my choice for physics is starting to make more sense. So then uh, what can you tell us about really that transition from high school into university? Um, it, like for me, honestly speaking, it was quite a lot because I went from Limpopo straight to Stellenbosch yeah. and I did not know any other person there. Okay, later learned, I later learned that one of my friends was there, but you know Stellenbosch, if you're it's in too the big. Uh, for, for faculty of science there and someone is in the engineering, like you can spend six months without meeting each other or bumping into each other. Yeah. Um, so it was quite, it was a cultural shock for me as well. Um, yeah. And, and, and it's like, okay, cool. But, um, but then the nice thing is that I was in the physics department and those people there, they were quite cool people. So academic wise, it was all good. Um, cult uh, cult culturally, it was a shock, but um, I, I had a great time there. And then I started learning also about other people's cultures. Can you go into a bit more about the culture shock thing? Oh, like, like just to understand on a day-to-day -day basis, I, like I'm more of a reserved person. Like, yeah. Just meeting a whole lot of people that are like embracing their culture, like the Afrikaans culture, doing the soki that, what, soki, soki. Soki, yeah. Those, yeah, those things. and. And those um, those meetings where you play the songs, the African songs, which I did enjoy, like um, it was just okay. I'm used to having events in my own culture every now yeah. and then, but on a regular basis. So it was like, ah, oh, oh, okay, this is nice. And the drinking culture as well, was like, oh, okay, people drink this much, mm, nice. <laughs> um, so um, what? What really made you choose Stellenbosch? Well, I I was looking at, uh, at it from a growth perspective. Yeah. Because the secondary school I went to is quite huge. I remember yeah. in my in my grade twelve, we had about four hundred students, four hundred yes. something students in grade twelve, and then mind you that. There were other grades before us. So if I went straight to Joburg, probably meet a lot a lot more people that I've met before. So yeah. in terms of growth, I was like, it's not gonna do much for me. If I can go to a new place, establish myself, survive there, I think that's the growth that I was looking for. And Salam was here. And also as a reserved person, I also looked at it from a perspective of, well, it looks like if I look at the map, it's in the bush or something like that. Yeah. So, okay. Let me choose that. Well, so it was, uh, it was a combination of, of, uh, of variables that led me to decide on the animals. So and for somebody, the, 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 sorry. 
sorry. I was also about to say also that at that time, the physics department, I think in Africa was the second best, only a second oh. to an Egyptian department. I didn't that even know that. Also, like, no, the, that department is very good. Wow. So then what can you tell us specifically about your course? Like to somebody who doesn't know, who's never heard of it, what can you, in what words would you explain um, what your what course is and what it entails? Sorry? Like, I mean, physics or the, well, I did, I did physics really. Uh, undergrad, I, I think I did all the physics modules that are, uh, that were available um, during my time. Um, and also I did applied maths as well. Yeah. So um, from a physics perspective, high level is um, you actually just want to understand how things work from um, gravity, like how does gravity work? That this is on a high level, not actually what you, you start off doing, but um, you wanna understand um, how can I put it? Like things like speed. Uh, if I'm sitting here and then somebody is driving, if I talk, will they hear me? What frequencies? Those kind of stuff. Like just basically how the world works, and yeah. that's basically physics. And and then with applied math, it's mostly okay. We have the math, we have the physics. Can we actually solve some problems with this? Basically, that's how I understand applied math to be. So then, um, how would you describe your whole student life? Like, how a typical day or week like? Were you very busy? Were you mostly free? Yeah. How was your life? Yeah. Yes. Um, my life was busy. Yeah. Um, sometimes. Uh, I did it to myself, other times it just happened. Yeah. Um, what I mean with that is that, well, okay, when I got there, um, starting to learn and then have like some five modules that you have to do. And then at Stellenbosch, you have assignments, weekly assignments and stuff like that. It's like, it was like cool, like that was just my life, spend my days in Nacha. It, like it was just like that, even when I'm not doing anything or also, like I would just prefer to be at Nacha doing, I don't know, maybe just lazing there or whatever. But like, I would think that I spend most of my time working. Wow, so then um, how would you describe your extracurricular activities that you were involved in at Stellenbosch? Were you involved in? I, yeah, well, with my, um, what do you call them again? Residents, um, I was at Hayes Marais uh played a bit of soccer um yeah like i think soccer is uh, the extramural activity i did yes now i had the time yeah so yeah it was nice it was just soccer so then um what other institution would you recommend to study the same course that you did except for stellenbosch well what i found out when um I was growing up, well, growing in my understanding is that it really doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, in, the, in the sense that, like, you just have to look at, with physics in particular, you just have to look at what you want uh, at the end, right? Um, for, for instance, if you want to, 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 to be an astrophysicist, I think UCT is probably the best, or UKZM. Yeah. Uh, we don't have that in Stellenbosch yet, or, well, to the best of my knowledge, but um, it depends on what you want to get out of it. So just look at the courses uh, or the curriculums for each institution and decide which one is best for you. But to say which one, it really doesn't matter as long as you stay a curious mind and you just explore as much as you can. So what was your coping mechanism throughout your... Well, things happen. Um, sometimes you, 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 you get a lot of work, but you still have to do the work. Yeah. Um, but sometimes, for me, 
when I feel that this is becoming too much, I would just stop doing everything. Like I just stop. Wow. Give myself, give give myself some time. Just just stop. Cause like if you continue, well for me personally, if I continue, 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 I get to a point where I'm not being productive at all. But if I stop, like I know that stopping physically does not mean my I stop thinking about it. Yes. Yeah. Um, I usually find my my answers well I'm not doing anything related to what I was stressed about so if I give myself just time breather then I, I was always fine so then what are your greatest regrets um, of that portion of your life greatest regrets yeah honestly speaking I this is the second uh, this is the second time in a space of a couple of weeks that I've had to answer this question. Oh. Um, but like, honestly, the, I don't think I have such a thing as a greatest mm-hmm. regret because in retrospect, I look at everything. I'm like, well, if I didn't do that, I probably wouldn't be where I am right now. Yeah. So am I, am I happy with where I am? Like I am on cloud nine, like I'm happy. So yeah. I don't think I have a greatest regret. That's amazing. What were some of the valuable lessons that you learned throughout your journey as a student? Well, as a student, you you know that year after year, you have a different combination of classes, for instance, yeah. which means uh, you're going to work with uh, different people from year on year. And working with people like different people and learning to work with different people quite quickly was quite a is a lesson that i still hold um very high till today because even in the workplace i you have to work with different people and 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 be able to deliver so i think yeah. working on different groups different people changing uh um structures academic structures year on year was uh very valuable for me and what are some misconceptions that you think that people have about your field of study? Oh, I don't really concern myself with what people think. Um, oh, concerns about what people misconception? I really don't know. You I can really you can know. mention something that you thought was something else, and then when you finally got. To Stellenbosch, you were like, oh, okay, no. Oh, no, okay, here's the thing. Here's the, okay, yeah. Because the thing is, when you're thinking about physics from a perspective of never have done physics or from a high school perspective, yeah. you're thinking that, okay, cool, I'm going to go there, like start exploring black holes, go there, start exploring the, the high end physics that is on the media, right? And then you get to school, then they teach you about some Newtonian mechanics and I mean, it's very, it's vital for you, for you to understand Newtonian mechanics so you can do the black holes if you want, but the misconception is that you dive right into the deep end of the cool stuff, but no, you actually start from uh, baby walks or something. Yeah. yeah. So we are actually almost at the end of the interview. Um, I had so much fun. I didn't even notice like that we were actually <laughs> close to the end, but what advice would you give? Um, to somebody who wants to go into your field of study? Well, just go there, have fun, like learn as much as you can. Like just yeah. have fun. Cause I think, think physics, if you're having fun in physics, you probably won't even feel the pressure. So just have fun, like be curious. Like it's one of the things that I think I could have been more, uh, I could have done more of. Maybe that's a regret, I guess. Yeah. But it's one of the things that I, I, I think I could have done more, like explore the topics that they give us in class more, you know, just beyond the, the, the classroom curriculum, like just learn a little bit more, have fun, play around. So is there anything that you want to say to the youth of South Africa and abroad? Uh, okay, that's a difficult one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's a difficult one. Um, 
not in particular like cuz uh, i just think that okay this is more like in i this question i'm interpreting it as is there any advice i can give the youth yeah. uh, mm, uh no i no i i hate advices as that we projected my myself onto other people that i don't yeah. even know uh don't even met so that's you know, actually I deep <laughs> Thank you so much um for joining us. It's been such a pleasure and I I personally learned a lot from talking to you and I learned a lot from this conversation and thank you so much um for joining me. No, thank you. You're a great host. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>